Facebook Quality Alliance is the first national reporting system available to people around the United States on comparative performance data in hospitals. It is an enormous step forward in terms of consumers getting the information they need to make their health decisions and working in partnership with their physicians. Well, the first thing, if you think about hospitals and what they do, they take care of people. We're in the business of patient care. And so coming together in this quality alliance, we're focusing on how we can get more information out to the public to know about how hospitals perform. We think that's very important. Hello, I'm Doris McMillan. Welcome to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Hospital Compare Satellite Broadcast. Now over the next one and a half hours, we'll provide you with an overview of CMS's Hospital Compare website, information on the national launch of Hospital Compare, an overview of HCAPS, and information about resources available to you, such as the Quality Improvement Organizations and MedQuick. Our presenters will include staff from CMS's central office and members of the Hospital Quality Alliance. We will have one live question and answer session around 1.45 p.m. Now, during this session, you, the viewer, will have an opportunity to ask our speakers and panel members questions about their presentations. They have all the answers. I'd also like to inform you that this broadcast is being webcast simultaneously and can be seen up to three months following this program. Now, I'm going to give you that website address at the conclusion of the broadcast. Well, now that I've told you a little bit about what you can expect today, I would like to have Dr. Mark McClellan, Administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, welcome you to today's program. I'm very pleased to join you to talk about the Hospital Quality Alliance. This alliance is a critical piece of our efforts at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services to support and reward high quality care. It's a model of how we can all work together to make real progress in getting better care to patients at a lower cost. Here at CMS, we view the goal of better care and greater efficiency in our healthcare system as paramount right now. Hospitals are delivering more sophisticated and effective care than ever before, but at the same time, patients and taxpayers are more concerned than ever about whether they can afford access to this quality care. As the biggest health insurer in the country and in the world, at Medicare, we need to help make sure that we are all working together to deliver quality and affordability. And that's why all of us here at CMS are so committed to our collaboration with the Hospital Quality Alliance. And so pleased with the progress toward better quality that the Alliance is achieving. The quality measures that the Alliance has developed and the additional measures that are under development right now are making progress toward better quality for two main reasons. First, we're providing meaningful, standardized assessments of the care that hospitals provide based on validated measures that clearly are related to quality care. This helps you focus your energies on actual quality improvement rather than on running in different directions to try to meet different reporting requirements that are less clearly related to the quality of care that really matters for patients. Second, we'll empower consumers and their advisors with quality of care information to make more informed decisions about their health care. As we continue to improve and enhance the quality measures, and as we also work to provide reliable and clear information about the cost of care, we'll be able to prov provide even stronger rewards and support for providing high quality, efficient care. And I mean it when I say we view the success of the Alliance as a model for how CMS can work effectively in other parts of our healthcare system. By active collaboration between public and private entities, providers and purchasers, consumers and regulators, we can identify and more effectively work toward providing high quality care, or what many have defined as doing the right thing at the right time in the right way for the right patient, for all Americans. Our goal is to increase value. We hope ultimately to reduce cost as well, but it's always value first. And the same thing is true for patients in other settings of care. Our activities to promote hospital quality are just one element of our ongoing quality initiatives which involve many aspects of the Department of Health and Human Services. These activities are directed toward improving the quality of care in nursing homes, home health agencies, health plans, and dialysis facilities. We are extending these same kinds of initiatives to physician offices and to Medicare Advantage plans and the upcoming prescription drug plans. Increasingly, our activities involve focusing on the patient's needs and on coordinated and effective care across all settings especially for the chronic conditions that account for the vast majority of Medicare spending today. 
I've had the distinct privilege of presenting one of the next steps in this effort to you all today, the new consumer-oriented hospital compare website that CMS has worked hard to develop. One of the first things you'll notice about this site is that it is at an HHS web address. This website is envisioned as a source or a portal to information of use to all Americans, not just Medicare beneficiaries. In keeping with that philosophy, it provides access to other reputable sources of information about quality of care and hospital services. These include the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, our sister agency at HHS that works closely with us on quality improvement initiatives, as well as other organizations with whom we are collaborating in the Hospital Quality Alliance. This includes the American Hospital Association, the Federation of American Hospitals, the Association of American Medical Colleges, the AFL-CIO, the AARP, and others. Our message to the public is that Hospital Compare is a place to start a conversation about how to get the best care. It's not, and it's never going to be, the government's list of America's top 100 hospitals. Rather, it's intended to be a reliable and consistent and broad source of information for patients and their doctors and their other medical advisors to use to help get better care. We are telling consumers and those who assist them in making decisions that they should use information on hospital compare to talk about quality to their hospitals and physicians. We're trying to equip consumers to think more concretely about quality, to realize that quality can differ significantly across facilities, that valid and widely used measures of quality can be a tool to help understand quality differences, and even more importantly, that individuals can affect quality through their questions and through their choices. Our message to our partners in the Hospital Quality Alliance is that we need to build on success. CMS is continuing to work with our partners in the Hospital Quality Alliance to expand and improve the set of measures and other resources that are included in Hospital Compare. I think it's very important to enhance the measures to include other meaningful dimensions of clinical quality and patient satisfaction and overall efficiency of care as quickly as possible. At the same time, CMS will continue to use all of the tools we have to help support your efforts to improve the quality of care for our beneficiaries and all of the public. There are a number of things that we want to do to help. First, we'll provide you with expert technical assistance through our quality improvement organizations, or QIOs. And we are increasingly evaluating and rewarding our QIOs based on how hospitals and other health care providers think they're doing in this regard. Second, we will work with partners in the beneficiary communication uh, experts to improve the usefulness of the consumer information that we provide based on empirical evidence of how information can best be presented to improve consumer understanding of what to look for to get the best care and how to make informed choices to get the most value in their health care. Third, we'll use our regulatory and payment authorities to make sure that a consistent high minimum standard of quality is articulated and enforced in a manner that promotes quality improvement. Finally, we will continue to support and participate in this and other partnerships so that we can work together to promote improvement, find and maximize efficiencies in delivering care, and achieve the best possible health care and health for all Americans as a result. We've used this overall strategic approach successfully in our initi initiatives with nursing homes, dialysis facilities, and most recently home health agencies. It is a strategy with a proven track record. And now, with your help, we're bringing this strategy to the largest sector of our healthcare system. Our ability to successfully launch Hospital Compare is in large measure due to your willingness to step forward to report on your performance and to the continuing collaborative efforts of the Hospital Quality Alliance. So I want to conclude by thanking the Hospital Quality Alliance for the tremendous support and invaluable contributions to this important effort. This is not a final product, but a next step down a very important road. It's a critical step down the road towards our moving from simply supporting access to care to supporting access to high quality care that is always getting better. This is a work in progress. I and the other HQA collaborators welcome your input as we work to achieve our shared goal of getting up-to-date, innovative care to every person in America. Thank you for all that you are doing to get us there.
And thank you, Dr. McClellan. We're joined now by our live presenters, Dr. Trent T. Haywood, Acting Deputy Chief Medical Officer of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Also joining us, Mr. Peter Ashkenaz, the Deputy Director of the Media Affairs Office in the Office of External Affairs in CMS. And I'd like to say welcome to both of you. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Dr. Haywood, let me start with you. Uh, let's begin our discussion with, first of all, what's the purpose of today's broadcast and what do you hope the hospital community will learn from it? All right. Well, thank you, Doris. The purpose of today's broadcast are first to introduce the Hospital Compare website as a site that provides reputable sources of information about quality of care and hospital services. Second, to prepare the community for the national launch of this website scheduled for April 1st, 2005. Third, we'd like to highlight future steps relating to the Hospital Quality Initiative. And fourth and finally, we'd like to emphasize methods of assistance that will help us collectively achieve our goals of improving the quality of health care for all Americans. Now, Dr. Haywood, you mentioned the Hospital Care uh, Compare website. Can you tell us more about the website and what it represents? Yes. Uh, the Compare website is a major accomplishment towards our goals of empowering consumers and supporting providers in their efforts to improve the quality of care in hospitals. It represents a private-public collaboration that recognizes the need for a model of how we can all work together to make progress in getting better care to patients. The Compare website is intended to support informed healthcare decisions by providing consistent and reliable information to consumers. I would like to emphasize that the Hospital Compare website is not and will not be the government's list of the top 100 hospitals. However, the Compare website is a critical step towards supporting access to high quality health care. Well, can you tell us something about the quality information that can be found on the Hospital Compare website? Yes, the Compare website will include information on 17 quality measures. The measures that were selected have gone through extensive testing for validity and reliability by CMS and the Joint Commission on Healthcare Organization and the Hospital Quality Alliance. The hospital measures are also endorsed by the National Quality Forum, a national standard setting entity. These 17 quality measures were chosen because they are related to three serious medical conditions that are common among the population and because they reflect widely accepted standards of practice. These are also measures where, where significant improvement will lead to better health outcome for consumers. The quality measures are grouped into three conditions. Number one, acute myocardial infarction or a heart attack, which includes eight measures. Second, heart failure, where there are four measures. And third, pneumonia, which includes five measures. Now, the 17 quality measures are as follow. First, under AMI, aspirin at arrival, aspirin at discharge, adult smoking cessation advice or counseling, ACE inhibitors for left ventricular systolic dysfunction, beta blocker at arrival, beta blocker at discharge, thrombolytic agent received within 30 minutes of hospital arrival, PCI received within 120 minutes of hospital arrival, and under heart failure, first, discharge instructions, left ventricular function assessment, ACE inhibitor for left ventricular systolic dysfunction, adult smoking cessation advice counseling, and then under pneumonia, initial antibiotic timing, blood culture, blood culture performed before first antibiotic received in hospital, pneumococcal vaccination, adult smoking cessation advice or counseling, oxygenation assessment. And then in addition to these 17 measures, CMS anticipates adding additional quality measures relating to pneumonia and surgical infection prevention. We anticipate that the five new measures will be added this summer, bringing the total to 22 measures on the Compare website. Another piece of hospital quality initiative includes the HCAPS instrument. We anticipate the release of the HCAPS data in 2006 with information on HCAPS will be provided later in this broadcast. Dr. Edward, thanks so much for that information. Is there anything else you'd like to add before closing? Yes, um, thanks, Doris. CMS is very excited about this opportunity to improve the quality of care in all hospitals. Again, I would like to thank all those who have been a part of this broadcast and the Hospital Quality Alliance for their support and help in encouraging the, their members to publicly report quality data. CMS and the Hospital Quality Alliance look forward to continuing these efforts to improve health care for all Americans. All right. Thanks so much, Dr. Hayward, for the overview of the Hospital Compare website and the quality measures. And now we're going to hear from Michael McMullen, the Deputy Director of the Centers for Beneficiary Choices in CMS. Michael will talk about the role that consumers have played in this initiative. But first, we're going to hear from more members of the Hospital Quality Alliance. What Hospital Compare means to my constituents 
it is an opportunity, is a chance for hospitals to show consumers what they have to offer them and compare themselves to others in the community. We want the best care for our consumer patients and Hospital Compare will give the consumer patient, patients the power to make the comparisons to decide where the best hospitals are for them. Consumers need hospital information about quality in order to make good decisions about their own care. We know that quality varies among hospitals, but the information available today is often of poor quality. It doesn't cover all of the uh, conditions or treatments, and uh, it's unreliable. So uh, we welcome uh, the entry of better quality data that allow consumers to make choices based on quality performance. One of our key missions in the Center for Beneficiary Choices at CMS is to provide information to help consumers make informed decisions about their health care. The Hospital Compare website is an important tool to support consumers and to stimulate and support significant improvements in the quality of hospital care. This website provides useful, accurate, and timely information about hospital quality to enhance the ability of consumers and their advocates to make informed decisions about the health care they receive. Consumers can use this information to, this, to decide with their physicians where they can get the best hospital care. Patients who are informed and involved in decision making about their care can help ensure that the care they receive is of the highest quality and best meets their needs. The Department of Health and Human Services and the Hospital Quality Alliance are proud to launch the Hospital Compare website later this month. Through a collaborative effort, the Hospital Quality Alliance is providing quality of care information not only to Medicare beneficiaries, but on the majority of, adult, of the adult population in the United States. The purpose of Hospital Compare is to publish clinical performance measures for all hospitals volunteering in the Hospital Quality Alliance. Hospital Compare is a web-based tool with search and compare functionality to assist with decision making. Hospital Compare includes background and exploratory text about the quality measures, rates for selected clinical quality measures, guidance on how the information should be used, and links to hospital resources. The upcoming release of Hospital Compare later this month will include quality measures for all the hospitals that volunteered in the Hospital Quality Alliance. Users will be able to search for hospitals by state, county, and zip code. While Hospital Compare is designed primarily for consumers, a feature for professionals will be made available to provide more technical information. Consumers will be able to access Hospital Compare directly by going to www.hospitalcompare.hhs.gov or they can click on the Hospital Compare link from www.medicare.gov. Consumers who do not have access to the web or who have questions about Hospital Compare will be able to call Medicare's National Helpline 1-800-MEDICARE for more information. I would like to thank the more than 4,000 participating hospitals, the Hospital Quality Alliance, and consumers for their invaluable input into the development of the Hospital Compare website. This website represents a major step forward to improve hospital care through the dissemination of quality information to the American healthcare consumer. Next, we're going to hear from Elizabeth Goldstein and Minette Haviana. Liz is the director of the Division of Beneficiary Analysis in the Beneficiary Education and Analysis Group in the Centers for Beneficiary Choices in CMS. Liz will talk about consumer testing of the Hospital Compare website. Following Liz is Manette from the Beneficiary Information Systems Group in the Centers for Beneficiary Choices in CMS, and she'll discuss or demonstrate how to navigate through the Hospital Compare website. Now, after Liz and Manette, we're going to hear from more members of the Hospital Quality Alliance. Today, I'm going to briefly describe some of the testing CMS has done so far on the Hospital Compare tool. With all of our Compare tools, we do testing with potential users to make sure that the content look and navigation features on the tool meet their needs. This testing is critical for developing our website tools. Over the course of the past four years, CMS has done a lot of research on hospital quality. We began in 2001 by contracting with a number of consumer research firms to study consumer, provider, and other stakeholder interests in understanding of consumer information on hospital quality of care. 
This research began by exploring the reactions of physicians and consumers to the idea of public reporting. In 2003, before we posted the 10 clinical measures for heart attack, heart failure, and pneumonia to the CMS site, we conducted cognitive interviews with physicians, nurses, and consumers on the content, look, feel, and navigation on a public reporting website. As you all know, the cms.hhs.gov site focuses on a professional audience. All through the development of this site, stakeholders provide invaluable feedback to CMS contractors developing and testing the site. They did so through monthly meetings of the Hospital Information Workgroup, or HIW. In late 2003 and early 2004, CMS began building a consumer website. We began testing preferences for an understanding of different hospital characteristics, things like specialty services offer. We also explored consumer understanding of composite or rolled up measures versus individual measures. In late spring and summer 2004, CMS developed and tested a prototype for the consumer website. We studied how consumers and healthcare professionals understood and navigated through the prototype, how they searched for information, and how they compared hospitals. The Hospital Information Workgroup continued to provide the contractor with stakeholder feedback during this time. Many changes were made to the prototype, reflecting the input from testing and feedback from stakeholders. Some changes include simplifying language, making navigation easier, and making it easier to find the comparative data. In fall 2004, CMS conducted a final set of testing before the consumer site went live. This testing focused on how to display benchmarks in a way consumers could understand and use. It also looked at how to best distinguish between hospitals with large numbers of cases on a measure from those that had too few cases to make confident comparisons with other hospitals. As I said before, many changes have been made to the tool as a result of testing and stakeholder feedback. CMS plans to continue testing the website after it goes live so we can keep making improvements to the displays and in the language on the site. Thank you, Liz. Hello, my name is Minette Havaliana from the Division of Website Project Management. I will be presenting the Hospital Compare tool. This tool is unique from other Medicare quality tools in that the information is applicable for all adult patients. Patients and their caregivers can use the information on hospital quality to make informed decisions. The URL address for the Hospital Compare is http colon double slash hospitalcompare.hhs.gov. This site can also be accessed from medicare.gov, cms.hhs.gov, and hhs.gov. Because Hospital Compare will be posted on the hhs.gov, the subtitle alerts people with Medicare that this information applies to them as well. The first page of Hospital Compare contains four tabs near the top of the screen, Search, About, Data Details, and Resources. Click on each tab for the following information. Search allows you to find hospitals in a specific area. About provides background information about Hospital Compare and how to search. Data Details includes detailed information about the quality measures. Resources provides additional helpful sources of information including CMS publications, related websites, and a glossary of terms used in Hospital Compare. Step 1 of Searching for a Hospital. With the Search tab highlighted, Click on state, county, zip code, or hospital name. Select the state or county from the available list or type in the city, zip code, or hospital name. Step two, in the first sentence of this page, you will see the number of hospitals meeting your search criteria. The hospitals are placed in two groups, acute care, general hospitals, and critical access, rural, remote hospitals. To see a definition of acute care hospital, select the link and it will take you to the glossary with the, term, with the definition for the term.
Basic information about the hospitals that meet your search criteria is displayed, including name, telephone number, if they operate an emergency department, and if they are credited. You may select up to 10 hospitals within each group and click Next Step at the bottom of the page. Note, you cannot select from both groups at the same time. Step 3, Select Conditions. You must select one or more clinical conditions to proceed. You may select all conditions at the top of the page or all at the bottom of the page. Step 4, Select Quality Measures. Within each clinical condition, quality measures are displayed. You must select one or more quality measure to proceed. You have several selection options. You may click Select All at the top or bottom of the page to view information for all the quality measures. You may click Select All the quality measures within a condition. You may check the box by the individual measure you wish to see. To start over, click Reset Check Boxes. On this page, each measure is displayed in a bar graph format with text describing why the measure is important. You can also see state and national averages, a vertical bar which reflects a score of the nation's top 10% hospitals, and information within the bar graphs regarding the status of hospital data. You may select by condition or see all the measures numbered 1 to 17. To close or compress individual quality measures, click on the small box with a minus sign. To open the individual quality measure information, click on the small box with a plus sign. Within each table, you may find language that explains the hospital status regarding the data they submitted. An example is the yield sign that cautions against making comparisons when the number of cases submitted is less than 25. Click here to, act, to show actual data for the hospital along with a cautionary language. Quality measures tables are designed to allow for side-by-side -side comparisons of hospitals of each of the clinical conditions. Located below each bar graph is a button, Quality Measure Tables. Click on this button for the display of the quality measures tables. This table shows denominators, footnotes, and language associated with the footnotes. This concludes the search function. Following the tab are tabs that will give you information on the website as well as data collection. The About tab contains information about websites for consumers. The Quality Measures subtab addresses the issue of recommended care and exceptions to recommended care. How to subtab addresses patients and their families as well as health professionals and how to use this tool. The hospital checklist allows viewers to use this as a tool in searching for their hospitals. In the event that you have a complaint about the quality of your hospital care, you may contact your state's Quality Improvement Organization. This provides general information on Medicare coverage.
The Data Details tab provides data collection information for consumers, professionals, and hospitals. The first subtab for consumers defines what quality measures are and how data is collected. Subtab for professionals covers technical information, including confidence intervals and the technical appendix. Note to Hospitals provides an Oscar Aspen contact list for corrections to your hospital administ administrative data. The Resources tab are for consumers and professionals. You can see related websites for health information state-specific information, and contacts for more quality information. The glossary contains definitions for terms on this website. Publications are Medicare hospital publications. Again, the Oscar Aspen Coordinator contact list. And download database. In addition to data for quality measures, you can click here to find more information on hospital characteristics, such as hospital type, ownership type, and accreditation. This concludes the presentation. We hope that this quality tool will be one of several resources that consumers use in making informed choices for their hospital care. Hospital Compare also provides a feedback tool as well as a frequently asked questions feature. Thank you. There is evidence that shows that when comparative performance information is made public, it accelerates the pace of improvement. So by making this information public, we have every right to believe that there will be increased attention paid to providing care consistent with best evidence. The way that it will improve care to, to healthcare consumers across the nation is it will provide them with information that will enable them to select, compare, and make informed decisions about where uh, they seek their care. Uh, please note that the URL address uh, listed um, in the address bar of the website during the demonstration is not the actual website address for Hospital Compare when it goes live on April 1st. The correct URL is http colon forward slash forward slash www.hospitalcompare.hhs.gov. Again, http colon forward slash forward slash www.hospitalcompare.hhs.gov hhs, very important, dot gov. Our next presenter is Peter Ashkenaz, the Deputy Director of the Media Affairs Office in CMS. Uh, Peter, can you tell me about the communication and marketing activities related to the national launch of the Hospital Compare website? Well, like everybody has said, 
we're going to be launching this on April 1st at a national news conference and working together with the members of the Hospital Quality Alliance and I'm certain with many of our viewers today, the local hospitals, the quality improvement organizations. We're going to be launching in front of uh, a large number, we hope hundreds, of local reporters telling them that they can get this information and letting them know that they can inform all of their readers that all this information will be available at hospitalcompare.hhs.gov. And this will be the place that uh, they'll be able to look at the information. And this is going to have, we believe, major local impact because everybody wants to see how their hospitals are doing. And it's uh, the first step in the public reporting of, imp of this information so that consumers have the information that they need to make the decisions about their health care. All right. Thank you very much, Peter. And now I'd like to give you, the viewing audience, an opportunity to ask questions of our speakers. You can reach us by calling 1-800-953-2233, or you can send us your questions by fax, and the fax number is 1-410-786-0123. Uh, in addition to our previous live speakers, we are now joined on the set by Ms. Nancy Foster, Vice President for Quality and Patient Safety Policy, at the American Hospital Association. Ms. Susan Van Gelder, Vice President of Strategic Policy and Corporate Secretary with the Federation of American Hospitals. Elizabeth Goldstein, who was introduced earlier in the broadcast. Also available to answer questions are Dr. Sheila Roman, Senior Medical Officer in the Quality Measurement and Health Assessment Group in CMS. Ms. Deborah Hattery, Director of Quality Improvement Policy for Acute Care in Office of Clinical Standard and Quality in CMS. Captain Mark Cruchot, Technical Advisor in the Division of Quality Improvement Policy for Acute Care in the Office of Clinical Standard and Quality in CMS. And Ms. Manette Havayana, who was introduced earlier in the broadcast. Uh, our first question is for Liz. Liz, what part of uh, what part of hospital compared do consumers find most useful? In the testing we did, we received a great deal of feedback from consumers. And consistently um, in our testing, we found that consumers found the hospital checklist that Manette went over earlier very useful. This checklist, as Manette said, provides a list of questions for the consumer to go through when choosing a hospital, as well as gives questions that they can ask or discuss um, with their physician. Also, um, throughout our consumer testing, consistently consumers said they found the descriptions of the medical conditions very helpful. It gave them a lot more information about these three conditions, as well as the um, treatments that are associated with these conditions. So this was a lot of um, helpful information for consumers. Okay, thanks. Liz. Uh, we have a telephone call on the line. We have Jennifer from Washington, D.C. calling. Okay. Jennifer, thank you, and please go ahead with your question. Hi, yes. I was wondering where the national launch was going to be held. I had heard North Carolina, and I just was hoping for a little bit more information about who the audience was going to be and where the reporters were going to be coming from. Peter, that sounds like your question. It sounds like it's my question. The um, uh, event is going to be at, the, uh, uh, at a conference of healthcare reporters in North Carolina, and um, we're expecting that uh, reporters from all over the country will be attending. All right. What part of North Carolina? Chapel Hill. All right. Good place to have a conference. So if uh, you're uh, talking to any reporters, want to send them to Chapel Hill, I'm sure that the Association of Healthcare Journalists would love to have them enroll. Okay. Jennifer, thanks so much for your call. Uh, let's see. Let me ask Nancy or Susan, uh, what was the impetus for the Hospital Quality Alliance? Susan, you want to start? Sure. Well, First and foremost, it was the right thing to do, and it was the right time to do it. Um, every institution in this country has the responsibility to be accountable to the public. Uh, but one of the primary reasons we got involved is that we saw it as a wonderful opportunity for all stakeholders to come together and, if you will, stop the measures madness that was <laughs> starting to creep up into, uh, into hospitals' uh, environment. So we hope that through the Alliance, we can rationalize some of the craziness going on and all come together and agree on how hospital performance should be evaluated or measured in terms of quality and it will be standardized so that the public can compare hospitals around the country equally. Okay. 
In addition to the measures madness that Susan referred to, it's long been the desire of hospitals to share their quality story, their quality improvement story with the public that they serve. But there's not been a good, valid way to do that before this. Hospital Compare will really offer us the opportunity to engage in those conversations with the communities we serve. And I know a number of hospitals have told me that they are planning to use this to talk with the public that they serve about the quality that they provide, about the quality improvement efforts they have underway, and about the work yet to come. All right, thanks so much. Uh, let's take another telephone call. We have Lauren on the line calling from Ohio. Please go ahead, Lauren. Thanks for calling. Hi, we were just wondering, um, is the population database limited to Medicare, Medicaid, or all payers? Dr. Hayward? Right, uh, thank you uh, for your call. No, this is actually all payer data, so it's not limited to the Medicare population. We pr purposely, as far as this hospital quality alliance, wanted to have, to the extent possible, enough information that it provides a comprehensive view of the services provided in that institution. So it is all payer data. Okay, Lauren, thank you so much for calling. Let's take another call. We have Mike uh, calling from Burlington, Vermont. Please go ahead, Mike. Yes, I was just wondering how the consumer will be able to differentiate between the data that's on this website and what's on health grades. Would like to take that. Let me, let me start with that and then uh, see if Elizabeth or Liz wants to add anything. The information that we've done, as I stated earlier in this conversation, is that this is not a top 100 hospital. We're not doing any particular rankings of individual hospitals. And so what the consumer has available to them via this website is the opportunity to look at all the, all the hospitals that are currently in their marketplace and do some comparisons. But we do not specifically do not rank the hospitals. And additionally, what you currently have on the website are certain indicators that we've all come to an agreement around as far as the hospital community. And so that is also reflected in the website. Anything else? Any okay. Additional. All right then. Uh, Mark, let me uh, pass a question to you. How many total hospitals uh, are reporting information, uh, the 10 starter set of measures on hospital compare, and then how many are reporting the additional seven measures? Yes, um, <clears throat> right now we have about 4,200 hospitals that will be posted on the website. And of those 4,200, approximately 3,400 of them will be reporting all 17 measures, the 10 required measures plus the seven optional ones. Okay, thank you so much. And again, uh, audience, I invite you to call in with your questions. The number is 1-800-953-2233. If you're too shy to call, you can always fax us, and then fax number is 410-786-0123. Okay, we have Diane on the line uh, from Illinois. Diane, thanks for calling, and please go ahead with your question. I was just wondering how, what other avenues of uh, information are going to be able to be provided to patients? Uh, for example, those who don't have a computer, are fearful of computers, how else are they going to get the information about the, the hospital performance? Liz? Um, right now, it's going to initially go up on the website, but they will also be able to call, for example, um, our 1-800-MEDICARE line to get information about, you know, the hospitals in their area. Okay. Could I jump in there, Doris? Yes, Just go ahead. To add to that, I mean, one of the reasons that we are rolling this out at the Healthcare Journalist Conference that Peter has referred to before is that we believe many local reporters will pick up on this story. As a result, many will be able to read about their local hospitals in their own hometown paper. Mm -hmm. We think that will be a very effective way of getting the information to them. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Diane. Uh, I think we have Lauren back on the line with us again from Ohio. Please go ahead, Lauren. Lauren? They're having a discussion back there. Oh, Karen is from Ohio. That's why she's not answering. Karen, are you there? This is not Karen. Oh, oh who is this? This is Sarah. I'm calling from California. Well, hey, Sarah, we're glad to have you calling. Please go ahead with your question. Okay, my question is basically um, websites like HealthGrades, I know that they have a fee-for-service um, kind of report that you can get from them. Um, it's a kind of a low-cost thing. You can get like physician data, I believe, is one of them. Is there something similar to that that's offered through HealthGrades? 
But let me um, try to clarify or uh, respond to your question. What we currently have available, there is, first of all, there is no charge to the information that we have available. This is a public service that the Hospital Quality Alliance has come together to provide to the community at large. Um, currently, as I indicated, this is actual hospital compare, so it's not physician-level data there. This is data provided to the, cons to the consumers as it relates to hospital services. So no, there, are, there is not physician-level data available on the hospital compare website. Okay. Sarah, thank you for calling from sunny California. Uh, we're going to come back here. Uh, Rachel is on the line from Silver Spring, Maryland with her question. Please go ahead, Rachel. Do I have a question? Go oh, ahead. My <laughs> question is, um, it seems that this uh, information has been available in various states already, uh, Oklahoma, um, I know Michigan and Maryland, and I'm wondering how you all are going to uh, it, um, explain that to consumers. Is this the first time that they're going to be able to access this? Has this been available to them before in certain states? How can you just characterize the uniqueness of this, please? Thank you. Yeah, let me let me start with that, if okay. you don't mind, Doris. Um, the unique aspect of this is several fold. One is the collaborative process by which we've undertaken this. So we work closely with the hospital associations and their memberships to make certain that we did have standardized measures. And so as I indicated earlier, these are measures that have been endorsed and that are, reflect the actual level of services that are provided, the quality of the service provided in those institutions. Second, this is very comprehensive in comparison to some of the state efforts. As we indicated, there's over 4,000 hospitals that are participating in this particular effort. So that's the other unique aspect to this is that this a larger number is on a national scope as well. Okay. And in so doing that, Trent, we will be able to provide them with uh, comparisons to national averages so that uh, on most of the state databases that the caller referred to, the comparison is to state averages. Here we're really looking for comparisons across the nation so that hospitals are striving to achieve excellence compared to all of the hospitals in the country. All right. Thank you so much, Rachel, for your question. Uh, we have a fax that just come in. It says, is there a requirement to participate in data submission for Medicare reimbursement? No, this is actually um, one of the avenues that we've taken is that there is a this is a voluntary effort. And so there's no requirement that in individual institutions have to provide this information. So one of the things that we're quite pleased about is working closely with the Hospital Quality Alliance and their members that we're able to actually be able to do this on a voluntary basis. Now there was with the Medicare Modernization Act or the new law a financial incentive that was also provided to hospitals for submitting this information, but there is no mandatory requirement to provide this information. Okay, thank you, and thank you for whomever submitted the facts. Uh, we have calling from South Dakota, Jane. Jane, thank you for calling. Please go ahead with your question. And up here on the website is from last year, if I'm correct. How are you going to educate consumers that hospitals have been working and that the current data as of today may be better than what they're viewing on there? Peter? I'll, I'll start with that mm -hmm. one. I think that, that that is an important piece that the hospitals need to provide to the local reporters. As uh, you learn that your reporters are looking for this information, that becomes one step in getting that information out and um, if, if you have information that's currently available I, mean, I would um, argue that it's probably helpful to let reporters uh, bring them into your hospital show them what you're doing show them uh, what sorts of improvements that you've already made and use this opportunity to uh, to build on the efforts that you've been uh, undertaking to improve the quality of care Yes. To pick up on that, what Peter has just said, the American Hospital Association, in collaboration with the Association of American Medical Colleges and the Federation of American Hospitals, will shortly be sending out some proposed talking points or instructions for hospitals to use in considering uh, what information they need to put together so that they're fully prepared to talk with the local reporters once this, once this data is made available on April 1st. You could expect that by late next week. Okay. Let's take another telephone call. We have Karen on the line calling from Ohio. Please go ahead, Karen. Hello. I have a question to follow up about the news conference. Will you be offering an advertising campaign that will inform consumers to um, uh, go to the website and get this information? Thank you. In years past and in other quality uh, measurement uh, re reporting that we've announced, there had been advertising campaigns. There's not a national advertising campaign planned this for hospital quality, 
but I think that some of the quality improvement organizations and maybe even some of the hospitals themselves are planning on doing some, some of that locally. But as far as a national ad campaign, uh, the answer is no. All right. Thank you so much, Karen. I uh, just got a couple faxes in. Uh, Cheryl from West Columbia, South Carolina says, how does the launch of this website affect the 10 quality measurements currently displayed at Medicare.gov? And will the quality data be taken down from Medicare.gov once the hospital compare website is launched? All right, let me um, try to answer that, Doris. Um, the Medicare.gov website is actually primarily designed for Medicare beneficiaries. As I indicated earlier, this is actually all payer data. So one of the things that we specifically did in, in collaboration with the Hospital Quality Alliance is to provide this hospital compare website on the departmental website. So the, the HHS.gov that we had discussed earlier is one effort to highlight the fact that this is actually all payer data. As to Medicare.gov, beneficiaries will still be able to receive, that, receive information through that link to get to Hospital Compare. But the domain for the, the actual website is on the HHS.gov website. Okay. All right. And we have another question, another fax. How come you haven't mentioned the SIP measures? Oh, actually, I think I, I did. But to be more clear about that, at the outset, when I talked about five additional measures, three of those measures were, are actually the surgical infection prevention or the SIP measures. And as I indicated earlier, what we anticipate is later this year that, that actual con those conditions will actually be part of the Hospital Compare website. Okay, we have another fax. Uh, will the hospital have opportunity to explain their data or the quality improvements in place for the website? Let me start with that and then uh, defer to uh, Nancy or Susan. Mm -hmm. um, this is similar to the, uh, the earlier conversation, and we definitely want to make certain that their story gets told. This is not a situation where we're trying to be punitive in any fashion. This is really about trying to improve the quality of the health care services provided. So to every avenue possible, we want to make certain that that story is told. What we also hope to be able to do is, through, uh, is to be able to provide um, smaller, um, if you will, time lags between the actual submission of the services that are provided and the actual reporting of data. And so one of the continued efforts with this activity is to be able to decrease that time lag so that the information that is provided will actually be more current with the actual ongoing activities at that individual institution. I, I guess just to follow on to what Trent just said, um, as Nancy mentioned, we'll be putting together um, sort of a frequently asked questions list for hospitals and sending that out prior to the launch. And in addition to addressing the issues such as this launch includes only two quarters of data, so it's you know a very short snapshot in time, um, we'll be explaining some of the footnotes and how to address those because there's all kinds of quirky little things that are going to get worked out as the data is added in over time, but this initial launch does have some issues that need to be explained, and the fact sheet should do that. All right. Uh, let's see. We have Vivian on the line calling from Baltimore, Maryland. Thanks for calling. Vivian, please go ahead. Um, my question is there is something similar to this that was launched last fall in Maryland uh, where you can go onto the Maryland State website and look up the hospital's uh, data for these um, these various things. And I'd like to know, is there going to be a link to the various states that do have more detailed information? We actually do have plus and minus rankings. Yeah, if you look in the hospital compare website under resources, there are uh, links to additional information that will be provided. Um, I don't think we're going to go to the extent of if all 50 um, states necessarily have uh, information available that we'll be linking to all 50 states. But to the extent possible, we do provide on the resources tab additional information where consumers can actually find uh, information such as the quality information you're speaking of. If I could add to that, we think it's absolutely wonderful that many of the states are aligning their measurement activities with this national measurement activity. That goes to the issue of reducing the measurement madness that Susan spoke about earlier. It's very effective. Vivian, thanks for your call. Uh, let's take a call from Jill, who's calling from Vermont. Please go ahead, Jill. Thanks for calling. Hi, thanks. My question is, for small and rural hospitals with fewer than 25 cases for a given measure, will their data be displayed, or will there just be information that they had too few cases for display? Yeah, this is actually one of those issues that we've been trying to work collective with, um, both small and rural hospitals as well as internally trying to figure out what is the best way to be able to show their story as, as well. 
Currently what we've done with the measures that are available now, they're process measures, and to the extent that those particular conditions are actually, or those uh, conditions or services that are rendered at those individual institutions, we are providing that information. Whether it be a smaller rural hospital or whether it be a larger provider, for any particular measure, if there are a small number of cases, meaning less than 25 cases, we do highlight the fact that it's less than 25 cases and we actually display that information differently than we display the information where there's larger number of cases. Okay, Jill, thanks so much for calling. Uh, let's go on to Michigan and we have Melissa on the line. Please go ahead, Melissa. Yes, my question is, is how frequently will the data be updated? Right, I, I guess I'll take that okay. again. Uh, mm -hmm. where, where we currently are scheduled is that this is a quarterly update and what, one of the things that you'll notice is when you go onto the website, on the first page of that website to the bottom uh, left-hand corner, it lets the consumer know when that information was last updated. And it also lets the consumer know what, um, where that data come from, meaning what quarters of data, so that they can also understand whether or not um, the hospital has actually improved their quality of services uh, since the actual posting of that information. But the, uh, to get back to your original question, we're anticipating that this would be in a quarterly update. All right. Thank you very much, Melissa. I have a fax here. It says, we understand that the first release of data will be for the first two quarters of 2004. How will subsequent releases be handled? Will additional quarters be rolled in or will individual quarters be released? Yes, again, we're working through that uh, strategy as well, but it, the anticipation is that we would like to build out to a rolling uh, calendar year or four quarters worth of data. And with the anticipation that as the de data becomes older, meaning that first quarter that you started with, we would be able to drop those quarters out and continue to move forward and have a robust set of uh, data where there's a year's worth of data for that particular, um, for the services that are provided. All right. And if yes. I might add to that, though, uh, within the uh, QNET uh, website that hospitals have access to as they submit their data, they will be able to access their previous uh, information. So you, as hospitals looking to do quality improvement, can continue to track your progress on these measures for more than four quarters. Okay, let's take a call from Lee. Is it Lee or Leanne in Alabama? Leanne. Leanne. Yes, um, I was wondering if and when will the pediatric industry be included in the public reporting, and if so, what conditions will be reported? Yeah, this is another area in which there's ongoing activity working with not only the, our, our partners that you see here, but also nationally with um, National Association of Children uh, Hospitals and uh, Research Institutions, as well as uh, with the National Quality Forum, looking at areas in which we can actually be able to have pediatric information provided. There's a lot of conversation as to which of those conditions, some of the ones that we've heard this conversation around, particularly is, is asthma. Um, what this leads to, though, just to clarify, is that normally what we do with measurement activities look first to whether our guidelines and then try to establish whether or not we can get some consensus around what the appropriate measures would be. So one of the limitations on the pediatric side has been whether or not we've had robust uh, evidence-based medicine to be able to actually develop measures across a continuum. Okay. Thank you, Leanne. Uh, let's take another fax. I think this is Beth Juno. Uh, Beth says, what are the additional seven measures and will we automatically be signed up for these additional measures? And do we need to do anything more on our part to be included in all the measures reported? Do you want me to answer the, the first while you look for the additional measures? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, you do not need to do anything else to sign up to report the additional measures. Uh, when you pledge to participate in the Hospital Quality Alliance, you pledge to continue to submit data as we expand the measures. You can work with your quality improvement organization to make sure that the measures get in and get in accurately. And, and to that extent, you will have to work with your QIO and with your vendor if you use one to collect and submit that data for you. But you do not need to send in any more pledge forms or uh, do anything else to, to uh, have those data displayed publicly. Okay. Dr. Hayward? Yeah, let me ask Sheila off the top of her head because mine is on mark. Do you know off the top of your head the seven additional measures, Sheila? Uh, I can try to go for it. Right. Uh, in acute myocardial infarction or heart attack, uh, there are two timing measures. One is time to administration of a thrombolytic agent or a clot buster. Uh, another is uh, timing uh, to performance of a procedure called a, a percutaneous coronary intervention 
uh, otherwise called angioplasty, sometimes referred to as coronary artery rotor rooter. Okay, I'm two down. <laughs> uh, am I, I'm working toward the seven. We have discharge instructions for heart failure, and uh, under that are specified uh, a number of uh, elements that we feel that patients should uh, be given to manage their care at home for heart failure. That's a third measure. Uh, the smoking counseling measures are coming in at this point too, and those are for heart failure, for pneumonia, and for uh, heart attack. And I think I'm up to the seventh measure now, uh, which must be a pneumonia measure. And I'm thinking that it's the timing measure the initial for, for blood cultures. Right that uh, blood cultures uh, were gotten uh, before administration of antibiotics uh, in the treatment of pneumonia. And I think I've gotten, gone through all the seven measures if someone's kept count. And no, thank get you. an A. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Hayward, anything else? No, no, I, I, Sheila got all seven. Okay. Thanks a lot, Sheila. She passed the test flying <laughs> colors. Okay. Uh, let's take another telephone call. We have Kathy on the line from Louisiana. Thanks for calling, Kathy. Yes, you mentioned the possibility of hospitals advertising the hospital compare sites themselves. Do you anticipate that hospitals will use this data as a marketing tool against their competition? I'll be glad to okay. try and address that one. We, uh, we are encouraging hospitals to use this to tell their own story of quality improvement. Uh, certainly all of the hospitals with which I am familiar are eager to improve their quality, and we all have room for improvement. So we anticipate that hospitals will point at this data to either tell their successful story that they've already been able to achieve high levels of performance on these particular measures, or note how they are working to improve their current level of performance. We are discouraging hospitals from using this as a competitive advertisement. Okay. And before we take our next call, I just want to remind you again, the number if you'd like to call us is 1-800-953-2233. If you'd like to fax us, the number is 410-786-0123. We have Dan on the line calling us from Iowa. Thank you for calling, Dan. Please go ahead with your question. Uh, yes. Is there a website where we can get all of the measures, where all the measures are posted today that we can go out and look at it and know what they are? Yeah, there's, I think the, the measures are on several different uh, places. So right now, um, you can actually look on the, um, what's been the professional website. Um, so the cms.hhs.gov slash quality. If you link onto the hospital quality initiative, what you will immediately see um, on that actual page where it lists all the hospital quality alliance measures. So it lists all, actually lists all 22 measures on that particular website. And I believe, actually, you have the measures as well on we, your website. We do correct? on the AHA. If you go to www.aha.org and click on the Hospital Quality Alliance icon, it will take you to a website where you'll be offered the opportunity to select uh, from a number of different informational sources, one of which is specifically designed to t tell you what the measures are. Okay. Thank you so much, Dan, for calling us. We have another fax. Um, it says, how does uh, the report generated for this database, uh, how is it different from JCAHO quality improvement report? Yeah, the Joint Commission actually is one of the, um, the Hospital Quality Alliance partners, so we work um, quite closely with the Joint uh, Commission um, on this activity. What we've currently uh, done is we've tried to align all the measurement activity with the Joint Commission as, as one of our partners to make certain, again, as as um, Susan and um, Nancy alluded to, is to try to decrease any confusion out there. Now on the website display, one of the things that you would notice distinguish distinguishable currently on the website is that we're not actually rolling up the individual measures at an aggregate level. So what you will still see right now is currently the 17 uh, measures listed underneath the clinical conditions, but we're not rolling them up for an aggregate level at this point. Okay. Let's take another telephone call. We have Liz on the line from Boston. Please go ahead, Liz. Hi, I was calling to find out what the data time frame would be for the seven new measures. Um, I understand that it, it will be Q204 only, whereas the other um, 10 starter set will be um, Q1 and Q2. Could you please clarify? 
Right. This again reflects that we're trying to actually move forward to a, a rolling year worth of data. So you are correct that the starting point for those additional measures is a quarter in advance in comparison to the, the original measure. So you are correct in that. Okay, Liz. Thank you so much for your call. Let's take another call. We have Karen calling from New York. Please go ahead, Karen. Um, I think I heard someone mention in the beginning of the uh, webcast that the website will display confidence intervals, and I was wondering what that pertains to. For example, are you going to be comparing individual hospital performance against a national average and then reporting whether the difference is statistically significant? Now, let me start with that answer, and then I'm going to let Mark Kruchat, Captain Mark Kruchat, um, conclude with this answer. One of the things that you would notice if you actually go into the website is that we do allow for there to be a distinction of information for consumers and for professionals. And if you actually go into the aspect of the website that's for professionals, it allows one to be able to generate a confidence interval based upon the size of the sample. And so that's the table of the information that's provided. So let me see, Mark, do you have any additional information you want to add? No, uh, excuse me, I just wanted to mention that the uh in the technical appendix, we did mention confidence intervals for the data. The idea there was to get approximate uh, measures for people that were interested in the confidence intervals. We've also set some up for the average data. But in fact, we have published the denominators for the measures so that you individuals can calculate confidence intervals if they so choose. However, we're not doing it on the website, and we are not doing it purposely so that we are not comparing the hospitals to one another. Okay. Uh, thank you, Karen, for your call. We have a fax, uh, and the, they're asking, they said, please give the dates and times of the news release again because they're having web stream technical difficulties. Thank you very much. It will be April 1st, Friday, April 1st, somewhere in the noon hour Eastern time we anticipate. Okay. Uh, let's take another telephone call. We have uh, Heather on the line calling from Maryland. Please go ahead, Heather. Yes, hi. I am listening and trying to follow you guys here when you're talking about the different websites. And you're referencing the Hospital Compare website, whether it includes the HHS.gov or not. And these sites are not currently available, so I'm not sure what you're, um, where you're trying to guide us to. Yeah, now let me try to clarify that because the, one of the purposes of this broadcast is actually to prepare you for the actual launch of that website. So you are correct that that information is not currently available. It will go live on April 1st, 2005. So you are correct, that information is not available. What you had previously was a, uh, information that was available on the professional website that's specifically for professional users, but as to the consumer website, that is scheduled to go live on April 1st, 2005, and that is when that actual URL will be activated. Go ahead. Trent, to, yeah. to, to add on to that, will the CMS professional website sort of go down once the public website's up, or, the, or will two websites be maintained? Well, let me, let me clarify. Um, sorry. Let me clarify as to the, we, we don't want to have um, kind of dueling websites at all. So that's not the anticipation. There will always be information that's available on the uh, Medicare.gov as a link to um, the, um, the departmental website. As to the actual professional website, there's information there beyond, currently beyond just the display of the information. And so we need to have further conversation about that, that additional information as to whether or not that information will remain on the professional website. But that's beyond just the, the measurement display for okay. hospital compare. Okay, good question. Uh, I think you've already answered this, but we're going to answer it again because it's going to help them out. It says, are there any restrictions on how hospitals can use information from the Hospital Compare website in their marketing efforts? For example, can Hospital A produce a full-page newspaper ad showing their own data and data from Hospital B and make the statement that consumers should choose Hospital A because it's scored higher? Well, let me, let me try and be the one to answer that. Okay. There are no restrictions. and I don't think any of the organizations represented at this table or as part of the Hospital Quality Alliance has actually the authority to restrict hospitals from using the data in, in their marketing campaigns. But we are discouraging hospitals from making those kinds of hospital-to-hospital -hospital comparisons in their advertising campaigns. Part of the reason for doing that is, is uh, something I alluded to before, which is that no hospital is perfect in its own delivery of high quality care no matter how hard they strive and I know they are striving very hard 
the data that, that we are displaying right now may show you to be good, but as you know, we are including additional data on the Hospital Compare website as we build it out over time. You may be less pleased with some of the data that, that is shown later on. So treating it with respect is in, and recognizing that uh, there could be ups and downs is an important aspect of this. But secondly, your job as hospitals is really to deliver the very best care that you can. That's a comparison to your previous performance, not a comparison to the hospital down the street. We encourage you to think in those terms. Well and, said. And to put this into perspective a little bit, I think that um, if you haven't looked at some of the existing um, comparative websites that are available from Medicare.gov, what you'll find is that the information that's there is truly comparative information. There's not rankings. There's uh, no listings to say who's better, who's not better. And what you're going to find is that um, using nursing homes, uh, continuing to use that as an example, what you're going to find is if you go into a community, you're going to find a couple of nursing homes that do phenomenal on a couple of measures, and other nursing homes that didn't do so well on those measures are doing much better on other measures. So it's real difficult to get out there and say, boy, we're the, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're the ones that are best in this piece of it, because that ends up being even more confusing to the consumer. And um, to that, I would uh, urge um, hospitals and anybody else that's using this information not to use them as ratings but to give the information so that it's comparative. I mean there is a reason that this is being called hospital compare is because it's truly a comparison of what the information and what the data is that's up there. Okay. We've got time for one last question and we're going to take that from Du Bois who's calling from Massachusetts. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was um curious about any assurances that uh, could be communicated about how uh, data submitted is checked to be sure that it's representative and not cherry-picked by providers since it's being self-reported. Dr. Hayward? Yeah, actually, um, Mark Cruchet will talk briefly about the actual the validation process. Well, hi. Uh, I think the questioner is referring to two aspects of the data that, that uh, we monitor. The first one has to do to make sure that the data has, that has been submitted to the website is complete data. And we do have checks in place to look at that. Um, since we are the Medicare program, we can monitor the volume of cases that are Medicare, but because this is all payer data, we have to worry about uh, those cases that are not Medicare. But we are collecting total amounts and the population so that we can monitor for submission. As to the quality of the data that's in the warehouse, we do have a validation scheme in place to monitor the data that has been submitted to make sure that the information accurately reflects what is reported on the chart. And for this, we do a chart audit validation on a quarterly basis, and we have been doing that since the beginning, and it is our intent to continue to do this throughout the data collection process. All right, thank you very much. I know there's still a lot of questions, uh, calls waiting uh, to be answered, but unfortunately that's all the time we have for questions. We're going to have to move on. So we're going to continue with the second half of our program. And in this part of the broadcast, we're going to focus on future hospital quality initiatives. The next presenter will be Elizabeth Goldstein. Again, Liz is the director of the Division of Beneficiary Analysis and the Centers for Beneficiary Choices in CMS. And Liz is going to talk about the HCAPS instrument. Uh, following Liz, then we'll hear from a member uh, of the Hospital Quality Alliance. Let's take a look. I want today to give you some background about Hospital CAPS or HCAPS initiative. The information that I provide today will be a broad overview of the initiative. For those of you who would like more detailed information about the initiative, I will provide to you websites as well as an email address for obtaining additional information. The goal of this initiative is to uniformly measure and publicly report patient perspectives on their inpatient care. We began the HCAPS initiative in response to the need to assess the experiences of hospital patients, as cited by both the Institute of Medicine and the National Quality Forum. The intent is to publish data obtained through the HCAPS instrument for the purpose of assisting consumers in selecting hospitals and to create incentives for hospitals to improve performance in areas that are important from the patient's perspective. 
In terms of national implementation, hospitals will voluntarily use HCAPs under the auspices of the Hospital Quality Alliance. To provide some background, many hospitals collect information on patient satisfaction with care. However, there is no national standard for collecting this information that allows valid comparisons across all hospitals. In order to make apples to apples comparisons to support consumer choice, it is necessary to introduce a standard measurement approach. CMS has partnered with the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, or ARC, to develop HCAPs. ARC is another agency within the Department of Health and Human Services. ARC is our science partner in developing surveys that measure the patient perspective and care received. ARC has carried out a rigorous scientific process to develop and test the HCAPS instrument. This process has included a public call for measures, a review of existing literature, cognitive interviews, a three-state pilot test in Arizona, Maryland, and New York, consumer focus groups, field testing in multiple locations, public responses to four federal register notices, and stakeholder input. In addition, we plan to conduct a large-scale experiment to gauge the effect of mode of administration on responses to the survey later this year. The current version of the HCAPS instrument, which is the third draft, is composed of global ratings of the hospital and composite measures in seven key domains of care from the patient's perspective. The domains are communication with doctors, communication with nurses, responsiveness of the hospital staff, pain control, communication about medicines, cleanliness and quiet of the physical environment, and discharge information. HCAPS also includes additional items for adjusting the mix of patients across hospitals, which is done for analytical purposes. In November, CMS submitted the current version of HCAPS to the National Quality Forum's consensus development process. The final version of HCAPS instrument and implementation procedures will reflect the input from the National Quality Forum and the public comments from CMS's Federal Register notices. Once finalized, the HCAPS survey and methodology will be in the public domain. I want to emphasize that HCAPS is meant to complement, not replace, the data hospitals currently collect for quality improvement or other purposes. And participation in HCAPS is voluntary. In terms of survey administration, we have tried to offer as much flexibility as possible in the proposed administration protocols while ensuring that the data will be comparable. Participating hospitals can either integrate HCAPs within their current satisfaction survey, in which case the HCAPs core items would be placed before their own items, or you can use HCAPs as a standalone survey. Additionally, we are proposing four options for administering the survey, mail, telephone, mixed mode, and active IVR. We are offering multiple modes of administration in order for the hospitals to continue their current mode of administration. Once HCAPS is finalized, CMS will begin training of hospitals and vendors for implementation of HCAPS. Training for the implementation of HCAPS survey is planned for early summer 2005. There will be training sessions in select sites around the country. We are still working out the dates and times for the training sessions. All hospitals and survey vendors plan to administer HCAPS will be required to attend a training session. We plan to have a dry run of HCAPS following the training sessions. As part of the dry run, vendors and hospitals will begin collecting the HCAPS data and reporting it to CMS. I want to stress that data collected during the dry run period will not be publicly reported. We plan the first full national implementation of HCAPS following the dry run. This will be followed by the first public reporting of HCAPS results. 
If you want to learn more about HCAPS, you can visit www.arc.gov or www.cms.hhs.gov backslash quality backslash hospital. You can also email us at any time at hospitalcaps at cms.hhs.gov with questions. I would like to thank all the hospitals and stakeholders that have provided invaluable input and feedback throughout our public comment periods. The comments have been invaluable in revising the instrument and implementation procedures. I would also like to thank ARC for their tireless efforts in the development of HCAPS. I'm really excited about the fact that in addition to the uh, initial uh, 10 clinical quality measures that will be reported. Later this year, we will be ex extensively testing a, a new survey instrument called HCAPS. This is going to provide information to the public on the consumer's perspective on their care in the hospital. So both features we know from the Institute of Medicine and many other experts in the field are incredibly important to assessing quality. What happens technically, but also what was the experience of the individual receiving care. And HCAPS uh, will soon go live as a way to give that people that information. We're going to hear now from Dr. William Rollo, uh, Director of the Quality Improvement Group in the Office of Clinical Standards and Quality in CMS. And Bill's going to talk about the quality improvement assistance that QIOs are able to offer, followed by more words from an Alliance member and the American Health Quality Association. The nation's quality improvement organizations, or QIOs, are dedicated to improving the quality of care provided to the nation's Medicare beneficiaries. QIOs nationwide work under CMS contracts to assist providers in improving care. For the past three years, the QIOs have implemented CMS's National Quality Initiative. The Quality Initiative has two broad goals, to provide the public with more information to make choices about their health care, and to stimulate and support providers and clinicians to improve the quality of care. To support providers, QIOs offer quality improvement tools and training at no cost to hospitals in every state and territory. Many hospitals watching today's broadcast have benefited from QIO support. As a result, these hospitals have made important changes to improve their quality of care. But there is more work to be done. In August, the QIOs will begin a new contract, the eighth scope of work. This contract moves the QIO program into a new phase aimed at assisting providers to achieve transformational change. Transformational change means delivering care that meets the six Institute of Medicine goals, safety, effectiveness, efficiency, timeliness, patient-centeredness, and equity. To support transformational change, QIOs must help hospitals implement four strategies performance measurement and reporting, adoption and use of health information technology, process redesign, and organizational culture change. QIOs will also work with stakeholders, payers, business coalitions, provider associations, governmental agencies, consumer organizations, and media to help develop an environment which supports quality improvement through consistent assistance, public reporting, and pay-for-performance programs. CMS and the QIOs look forward to the challenges in this new contract. We are excited about working with our partners in the hospital industry to bring about transformational change. Working together, we can exceed expectations. Teaching hospitals are responsible for educating the future physicians and healthcare professionals and to educate those individuals in a setting where quality improvement is continually focused upon is the way to prepare future healthcare professionals for their lifelong uh, obligation to continue to improve their own care. Even hospitals that have a very accomplished quality improvement program often find that the QIO can help them. One of the biggest problems that hospital quality improvement teams have is when they start on a new project, surgical infection or AMI care, what have you, 
They need experts who are physicians to come in and work with their physicians, with their cardiologists, with their emergency room physicians, to show them the literature, to talk them through the problems that they see, to answer their questions and make sure that they're comfortable with the scientific basis for what needs to be done. Often that clears the way and the improvement effort can get going much more quickly then. And that's one of the services that a QIO can provide, even to an institution that has a good quality improvement program already going. Our next presenter will be Dr. Tanuj Gupta, Project Director of the MedQuick Content and Collaboration Team with the IOF Foundation for Medical Care. Tanuj will provide information on MedQuick as a resource available to hospitals and QIOs. MedQuick stands for the Medicare Quality Improvement Community and is an internet website commissioned by CMS to be a focal point for national quality improvement resources supporting the QIO program. The MedQuick concept follows the tone and agenda set by CMS in the upcoming eighth scope of work by providing an informational architecture that aligns with four strategies for transformational change and by providing a central internet presence for people in the quality improvement community. There are two major concepts at the heart of MedQuick, a resource center and an improvement support center. The resource center is a library of information that provides a framework placing each piece of content into a transformational context. For example, under the hospital setting, there are four topics of interest, and under each topic, like heart failure, information is organized across the four strategies for transformational change as identified by CMS. There are data collection efforts, tools to help hospitals address their measures, and an enormous amount of work getting into the national healthcare quality improvement effort every day. How can people stay aware of these efforts and learn from each other? MedQuick is one answer and one tool to help lead the way towards better information sharing and transformational change. And that concludes our broadcast. I hope that it has been helpful and informative. For those of you who would like to view the broadcast again, go to the following website, http colon forward slash forward slash cms.internetstreaming.com. For the latest information on the Hospital Quality Initiative and the Hospital Compare website, go to http colon forward slash forward slash www.cms.hhs.gov forward slash quality forward slash hospital. Due to the high volume of calls, we'll post an email box on this Hospital Quality Initiative website next week. Copies of this broadcast can be purchased from the National Technical Information Services at 5285 Port Royal Road, Room 1008, Sills Building, Springfield, Virginia, 22161. The phone number is 703-605-6186. I'd like to thank all of our presenters and our viewing audience for participating in the Hospital Compare Satellite Broadcast. I'm Doris McMillan. Thanks for joining us. Now we're excited about the this whole enterprise that we work together collaboratively on. And I think we're kind of proud of the collaboration and would like to see government do a whole lot more of this, of collaborating with the private sector to deal with common problems. We're so proud of this and we intend uh, to advertise this broadly among, um, among our leadership. I think it is a great example of people in positions of authority like the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Secretary Thompson when he was there, and the people at the hospital associations uh, and the people in the government regulatory bodies stepping forward and saying, we're going to try to do something that consumers have asked us to do for years and we know it's difficult and it's going to cause some anxiety in some corners, but we're going to get it done. And I think that's just a huge accomplishment and we look forward uh, to continuing to work with all these organizations.